I'm Sydney Bolden Long, and this is how I made it. Nineteen ninety, and there were employment agencies that could find you jobs. So I walked into this employment agency one day off the street. And I started talking to this lady about what I wanted to do. And she sent me to meet a good friend of hers who was the head of HR at Condé Nast. And I knew all the magazines that they housed. You know, some of my favorite magazines. And I had three interviews there. And I landed a job at both. I didn't really know what I was going to be doing. I just knew that I was going to be in an environment that was a dream environment every day. I always call it the dreamscape. And landing it, of course, is one thing, but keeping it and surviving in it is another. So I, as excited as I was about getting the job, I really um, was nervous about how to fit into this new environment. Um, how was I going to you know, wear all these clothes? What was, it, was I going to have to change my style? You know, what was my style? Um, what am I going to be doing? Am I going to be able to handle it? You know, this was New York City. This is you know, fashion capital one of the fashion capitals of the world. This was a New York socialite moment in the 90s. Um, big shoulders, power suits, vanguard media. They were starting this new magazine called Honey Magazine. And it was for women of color. And it was going to be young, and it was going to be exciting, and it was going to be fashion. And those are all things that I really missed and that I craved. I, I am a woman of color, and I've worked for all these mainstream magazines where you just saw a few people, whether it was behind the scenes or in terms of uh, the celebrities that we covered, if it was a celebrity magazine, or models, you know, just very few black women. And I really was excited about having a chance to cover stories that I was interested in personally and that I felt like younger women were interested in. So Honey was really appealing to me. So I went there to become the fashion director. And I must say that it was a startup. We were very small. So I left Honey and went to InStyle. They wanted me to recreate outfits that celebrities wore at a lower price. That was what magazines were doing at that time. So I would go and shop the market to try to mimic the look of what was on a celebrity. So a lot of the work was still life. And then came this column that um, I started doing called Instant Style. And it was all still life outfits. It was to teach a woman how to dress in her real life. And the response was well received. And so here I was now all of a sudden in a room, you know, just with clothing, putting them down on the floor, working by myself, you know, kind of after having this full life of being on set with five different people and meeting a new celebrity every two weeks. It was just me in a room with racks of clothes, putting outfits together on a floor, styling still life. And I, I liked it. I liked the peace of it. I liked the calm of it. I liked the creativity that really I dictated. Um, and I ended up doing that for almost 10 years. Um, and it was fun. I had a column called Instant Style that my name um, was on in the magazine. And it was, it was huge, and it was big, and it was fun. I'm inspired by happy people that really want to live, no matter what is going on in the world. They, they get up every day, that they want to be positive and creative and giving and sharing. Because when you meet someone like that, it makes you feel invincible. And that inspires me, and that makes me want to continue to give and to create. Because some things that you create are memorable to other people. They, they might be passing to me, but I think that's a great power to have.